Hello everybody, this is uh, Mr. McAllen again, and uh, this is the third part in a series that I've been working on to help explain how to work with implicit differentiation, and this is the third video. Um, this video, what we're going to be looking at or focusing on is how to find the equation of a tangent and normal line to an ellipse at a given point. And in this case, they gave us the point um, 1, 4, and if you look at this ellipse, we can actually have two points at the value x equals 1. So this is the point 1, 4, so we want to find the equation of tangency there and the equation of the normal line going in that direction. So what um, we could also have happen to us is sometimes instead of giving us the full point, they could give us, um, or you could be asked, you know, at the point x equals 1, and they leave the y value to be mysterious, so you would use this curve equation for the ellipse to solve for y. You would plug in all of your x values, and then you would get a quadratic for y, and you'd have to solve that. So we're not going to do that type of problem today, but I just want to make you aware that that could happen. In this case, when I designed the problem, I made it a little bit easier by giving you the point, so we could focus on doing the implicit differentiation. Remember the steps for implicit differentiation. We first use the ddx operator on both sides of the equation. We then separate any uh, y prime term, and then we solve for y prime. And then if we have to, in this case we do, we write our equations of tangency and normalcy um, using the points given. All right, so let's get started. I'll just rewrite the equation right here next to the ellipse. 3x squared plus y squared minus 3xy equals 7. And I'm going to take the derivative of both sides using the differential operator. I'm just going to write ddx of everything on the left and ddx of the 7. And that implies or means that I'm going to take the derivative of each one of these terms. Now, let's just understand before we jump into it. Simple derivative here. Simple derivative here, but remember we have to put our uh, dy dx with that term because we're taking the derivative of y squared, not the derivative of just x squared. And here we have a product rule. So that's where you have to be careful. And we have a negative sign here that we have to um, worry about uh, not losing track of that. That may change our answer. So. We'll take the derivative first of the x. We got 6x. The derivative of the y is going to be 2y. And we talked about this in the other video where we write dy dx, because that's a uh, conversion factor. Whenever we take a derivative with respect to x, and it's a function other than an x function, we have to include that. I'm going to leave the minus 3 out in front, and I'm going to work with the product rule of uh, 3 uh, of the xy. So remember. Um, <coughs> When you have the derivative of xy, it's a product rule, so that would be um, take the derivative of the first term, so it would just be 1 for derivative of x, and then multiply that by y. And then the derivative of the second term, I mean, the, deriv the second part would be leave the first alone, but take the derivative of the second term. So that would be, uh, now remember, when you have the derivative of, with respect to x, of plain old y, there's no need for a conversion factor. Well, you could think of it as being dy dy for first take the derivative with respect to y and then multiply it by dy dx. Or you could just go right ahead and call this the derivative of y with respect to x. So that's what I've done here. Uh, and that all equals 0. So now we can distribute our terms. We have 6x plus 2y. I'm just going to call this y prime now minus 3y. And I'm going to distribute the negative here. 
minus 3xy prime equals 0. So now I'm finally finished with implicitly differenti differentiating, and I'm going to uh, separate my y prime terms from the rest of the mix. So I'll have the 6x minus 3y. I'll leave that on the left. And I'll just subtract over the other two terms to the right side. And that will be uh, 3xy prime and minus 2yy prime. Some people will ask, can I, you know, should you always move the y prime terms to the right or to the left? It doesn't really matter as long as you're separating the terms. Everything should work out. Now I'm going to factor out um, y prime. So I'm going to take the y prime and take it out of both terms. So I have 3x minus 2y. And I just factored out on the, um, on the right side, I factored out the y prime. And I have 6x minus 3y on the left. And I'm just going to now divide that whole term, 3x minus 2y, And now I have my equation for my derivative of my ellipse. So let's just go back and take a look at this. How do we proceed from here? We remember that the point, I just want to check the point again, the point was 1 comma 4. So I need to find out my derivative at 1 comma 4. So y prime at x equals 1, y equals 4 is just merely substituting 1 and 4 in. 6 times 1 minus 3 times 4 over 3 times 1 minus 2 times 4. And the slope at those points should be uh, 6 minus 12 is negative 6 over. The bottom is uh, 3 minus 8, which is negative 5. So my slope for y prime is a 1 and 1 fifth or 1.2 slope or you could say just 6 fifths it's all good everything is equal to everything else in that case and there's no rounding off so when we write our equation of our tangent line uh, y minus uh, y1 equals m times x minus x1 we plug in our 4 for y1 our uh, 6 over 5 and x minus 1 and when you look at the equation just to check um, that does have a slope that's positive uh, it let's see if it has a slope that looks like you would go up 6 over 1 from that point so if I go up let me just erase that to double check so if I go up 1 2 3 4 5 6 um, over 5 units so hold on one second. I'm just messing around with the scale here. I should have a slope of 6 over 5. So hold on. Let's just check this out. So if this is the line. Does that have a 6 on 5 slope? It looks pretty close. I mean, my tangent line is approximate. It does look like these are about uh, 1 to 1, or you could argue that that's 6 to 5. Um, but it does have that positive slope. And we also get the same slope down here at the other point that would be the same, well that would be the other solution for x equals 1. Anyway, I'm getting off track, but I just want to make sure that as far as what we did today, um, this makes sense. Remember we sep we did the derivative on both sides, we separated any y prime terms, we solve for y prime usually through factoring, and then we write any equations that they ask us to write, um, you know, in terms of tangency and normalcy. Oh, the last part was what would the normal line be? And that's a simple change. We just use the opposite reciprocal on the point slope form, and we're done. So this would be tangent, this would be normal, and I hope this has helped you. Looking forward to your comments, and have a good day.